Hello subscribers and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be talking about the Versus letter and going over some features of the newer versions, addressing some issues and concerns and questions as well uh, people had with it, and just giving some more info and uh, details about it in general, as I haven't really done so in the past. So what is the Versus letter? It is a more affordable version of the Edelkron Action Module, but at the same time it keeps most of the features and uh, really doesn't sacrifice much. It's also quite a lot smaller than the Edelkron Action Module because the Edelkron Action Module is roughly this size, whereas as you can see here, this is nearly half the size. Now, most of you are probably here to see this, the pre-production version of the Versus Letter, um, of the Versus Letter 2 actually, more accurately. And uh, some of the main features are that it has a completely different uh, way of seeing how fast the Versus Slider is actually rotating and a slightly different UI position. So uh, on the exterior, it is just the same as all of the others. Uh, 3D printed PLA, uh, black red, and uh, on the back we have the battery mount. So similarly to the, uh, to the Edelkron mount, uh, the battery simply snaps in and is pretty firm. Now, however, um, you will not be able to use aftermarket uh, GH4 batteries, or at least I don't guarantee that they will work, because this one is designed for the genuine one, as you can see here, and uh, the aftermarket ones, the ones I have tested, uh, seem to all be different sizes, so I can't really make uh, a different versus slider for every battery. So you will have to use genuine batteries. Um, the battery locks in thanks to this springy plate that has this um, protrusion, that goes into the um, indent on the battery. And the battery contacts connect these uh, pins, spring-loaded pins that provide a good reliable connection uh, for the Versus Slider to work. Uh, here we have the on-off button and some controls which are currently a work in progress as I plan to change the controls completely uh, going from a, a capacitive button which I have been using for quite a while now uh, and transitioning to a rotary encoder for easier control and just uh, leaving two of the buttons uh, in place as currently it is quite fiddly to press them accurately and reliably. Uh, so let me just show you currently what is going on. Uh, the white strip on the front is actually not static. The way it works is it is an LED strip that will tell you how fast the Versa slider is rotating. So once we flip on the button it'll start a rainbow sequence uh, just to show that it is initializing and you can faintly see here uh, there are eight red LEDs. You may not see it too well in this very bright light because I have camera lights set up however uh, I can assure you that I can actually see it uh, pretty easily and uh, I'll be tweaking it accordingly uh, because I can change the brightness to anything I want. So once you uh, change the direction uh, of the Versa slider, it'll show you using this bright white light. So left, right. And uh, this is the maximum speed of the Versa slider at the moment. I can't really show you because uh, the shaft is quite uniform here. Uh, however, I hope to get it to the same speed as I was showing in the promo video, as some users complained about that. Now back to the LED bar, um, the way it works, it has eight uh, LEDs over here that will uh, change depending on what speed the Versa slider is at. Uh, so I just showed you what happens when you press the change direction button, which is uh, this one. And uh, when you press the salt button, all of the LEDs turn on as you saw previously, and the uh, Versa slider stops. So now just resuming it and uh, decreasing the speed. When you decrease the speed, the LEDs will go down. Uh, first the red level, which is the normal sort of product shot level, down to the blue level, which is a uh, time-lapse level. So here the Versa slider is barely rotating, so uh, one step, which is a probably half a degree of rotation uh, every couple of seconds, which will allow you uh, to do some very long time-lapses, uh, as you saw in the Probo video. Of course, I want to just mention again that this is a pre-production version and in the future the UI, uh, the controls will be completely different. So don't think that this is actually the Versus Slider 2 because more improvements will be made uh, to it in the next several weeks. So uh, some people had questions about how the Versus Slider is mounted. So here I have my Pro-Am slider. 
the way it works is you unscrew this um, leg on the versus uh, on the sorry uh, spark slider from Proim. You unscrew it. Uh, you take the versa slider and you simply slide it on and it clips into place like this um, and it's not going anywhere the fit is very tight you can also put the leg back in but I'm not gonna bother to do so right now um, also the versa slider is completely 3d printed as you can see here from a failed print uh, it's got this checkered pattern which means that this part, uh, which just clipped into place, is in fact slightly springy. Uh, it also means that this is PLA, so it will not withstand extreme heat. Uh, so obviously don't pour boiling water over it because it will completely melt and deform. I'm currently looking into using ABS uh, as the material, uh, so probably the Versa Slider 2, uh, the production model, will be made out of ABS. Uh, and one more thing about mounting uh, the Versa slider, the way the belt works is this belt is provided uh, in the package. It is provided for the 21 inch slider, uh, so you will be able to use it with all of the spark sliders. Uh, just simply cut it down to size, uh, depending on what slider you have. Of course, I don't have it properly tensioned right now. Uh, just replace the original belt by removing these eight screws over here and putting the uh, belt that is included in the package. Uh, you may notice that it's a bit uh, thinner, 6mm instead of 10, but that really isn't a problem. Uh, I haven't seen any issues that would come up with that. Uh, once you have this installed, the belt, so what you simply do is you pull it out, you'd unscrew it over here, uh, you'd unscrew the holding plate over here, and wrap it around the Versa slider. Of, uh, of course, I don't really have the gear right now, I need to 3D print myself one. Uh, but in the package you will get two gears, uh, one in case one of them runs out. Um, just simply put it over and you'll be done. Now, since you've made it to this point in the video, you're probably interested in the prototypes I have over here. So just gonna move this out of the way. Uh, here are some of my earlier prototypes. So here's my very first prototype that uses a stepper motor. So here's a NEMA 11 stepper motor, which is a lot less powerful than the NEMA 17. At first I think I thought it would work, but obviously after several attempts it didn't uh, move the slider at all, so I went with a NEMA 17. And here's the easy driver, just reversed over here, and the space for the Arduino. And here are the following prototypes that use the NEMA 17, and although it doesn't look like much improvement has been made, uh, actually quite a few things have been changed in every single uh, generation you see here and this is probably only a third of the all of the prototypes I have so here I was experimenting with different ways of printing it here it was printed this way uh, in order to minimize the support material which would go inside however the exterior finish as you can see here turned out uh, pretty badly um, apart from this one all of the pro uh, all of the versus sliders have been uh, printed like this, so the top material is very smooth. Also you can see some other slight differences such as the uh, belt um, belt kind of holding system. At first I didn't even have one, as you can see on the earlier ones, uh, the belt would be uneven and it would move around, but later on I moved to this circular design, um, this oval design to minimize friction and then later refined it by getting to this point. Uh, but I had problems of it snapping just over here when I was putting it on. So uh, in the final versions, as you saw on the one that I clipped into place on the slider itself, it has a small gap over here. So the plastic can bend slightly uh, to allow the Versa slider to be installed safely. As you can see, quite a lot of time has gone into making all of these prototypes and developing this product. Uh, so that is the reason why this is a closed source project at the moment. Uh, however, in the future I plan to make this a completely open source project and release the code for the Arduino and the STL um, files so you can 3D print them yourself. Uh, so that'll be sometime in the future, I don't have an exact date, but it will happen at some point. 
Now I'll answer several questions that uh, many people had uh, on the YouTube comment section. So the main question that most people asked is, is there going to be a version of this for the Edelkron of range of sliders? And the answer to that is yes, definitely there will be, but not at the moment because I don't actually have an Edelkron slider. The only one I have is the Pro-Aim one. Uh, so I will order myself an Edelkron slider, except uh, I'm quite busy right now, so probably it'll happen in the next couple of months. Um, another question that came up quite frequently is about the batteries. Currently I'm using the GH4 batteries, um, however people wanted to know if I'm working on Canon batteries or Sony batteries. And yes, that will be coming in the future, uh, hopefully, uh, but some batteries I of course can't implement because they're just too big for my design. So uh, I'm currently working on implementing a Canon battery, but that is proving quite difficult because the Canon batteries, they've got a completely different way of uh, the contacts attaching to the camera, so I'm working on that at the moment. Currently I'm in the process of redesigning it, as you saw uh, mentioned previously in the video, so I'm not selling any, although in the future, in a couple of months, after the redesign is complete, I'll be putting them up on my website, uh, available for probably £159, I'm not quite sure the price could go up and down depending on the different parts that I put into it, uh, and it'll be available for worldwide shipping. Uh, so stay tuned for that, subscribe for, to this channel, maybe leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and hope to see you in the future.